I'm getting ever closer to the 500 platinum trophy mark. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the platinum trophies I've earned over the last three months and problems I've encountered, which have led to me giving up on so many of these games. Welcome back to another trophy hunting update. Uh, why am I laughing? Um... Why am I laughing? Things have changed over the last three months. Well, the background, for example, it was just Timmy. Timmy! All right, and now we've got this. I mean, look at it in its old glory, and Timmy is not looking, not looking great. I mean, I don't really know what's going on. All right, I feed him every day. Well, I water him every day. He's getting some sunlight right now. He just, he's just seen better days, and I think he's a great metaphor for my life. Okay, no matter what. <laughs> so I've had a few issues the last three months that have really led to me giving up on a shitload of games, or at least abandoning them and moving on to other games. And I feel like I'm feeling very neurodivergent right now. I feel like my HD is on a whole nother level and I'm playing games. This is kind of what you might be like and this is kind of what my brain's like. The first thing I like to do in these videos is I like to look at what my trophies were like three months ago as opposed to what they are like now. So let's go do that, shall we? So my last update, I had 483 Platinums and I now have 488. So for the last three months, I've actually earned five Platinums, which is pretty good because I always set myself a goal of just one Platinum a month, which means I am on track to 500 Platinums at the end of this year. I mean, that's the only good thing I can take away from this three month update is I'm getting close to the 500 Platinum mark so I can make a video about how much I've wasted my time. But this is where it just, just regresses. I mean, if you've watched any of these from like years ago, because I've been doing these sort of update videos for like literally three years now at this point, I just always had a rapid <laughs> decline of trophies per day and it just keeps going down and down. And I went from, you know, a solid 6.14 trophies per day to 5.98. Clearly I'm just not gaming enough. And my world rank has descended, it's plummeted from 5,100 to 5,400 world rank. And my country rank is no longer, not even in the top 600. There was a time when I was like in the top 400. Okay, not a flex. I was a sad bastard at one point. Well, still am. Why? Why would you beep? Okay. You ruined my joke, damn it, computer. I can't keep up with the amount of easy games that are out there. The amount of people who are just blasting those easy games. The amount of people who are just spending 60 hours a week gaming. I know you're out there. I know you exist. Because clearly, you are just on a whole different level. It's not impressive, but you're on a whole different level of gaming. The biggest problems are my unearned trophies. I mean, 446 unearned trophies now compared to 290. And I used to have it under 200. I feel like there was some games I wasn't going to go back to. But 446 kind of gives me low-key anxiety, as does my completion percentage, which I've always wanted to hit 99%, okay? Like, 100% is not obtainable for me because I have FIFA 14, which is which has unobtainable trophies. And other games like Farpoint and Firewall Zero Dawn or Hour or whatever the fuck it's called. And I ain't going back to play those because they are just brutally hard. And VR games that are hard, you know, it's not just even a skill thing at this point. It's like being able to handle, like, the actual VR itself for hours on end, which if you've played it, some people just can't even play VR because they just drop dead. Uh, I don't have that problem, but after an hour, I do just want to die. Like I said, I've given up on a few games, which I... I don't know if I've given up on them yet, but I definitely have moved beyond them, and I can't see myself going back to them in the foreseeable, purely because... They're either disgustingly long. Someone twisted my arm and was like, come play this game with me. It'll be really fun. And then they just platinum the game in a week and I'm left there like, well, I ain't playing this game solo. Especially when that multiplayer, which we'll get onto in a moment. All right, before we go any further, I just want to quickly say thank you to my patrons who have continued to support my channel. Some people have been here since the very beginning, like going on like two years since I started the Patreon. It does really help. Your name's on screen now. I just want to say thank you to you all for really helping out the channel. I appreciate you all for the support. And if you do want to support Platpro on a more intimate level, then you can by checking out Patreon, which is down below. I would appreciate any support you want to give this bra. All right, so we're going to start this um, this venture, if you will, with some games I've already spoken about, and I'm going to talk about them briefly because I still have made no progress, which is firstly is Skyrim. 19% completion. I went through a phase of just playing this game, you know, a couple hours a week just because I felt like doing it. It was kind of like my switch off game. And I was like, I might make a video about it someday, but also the amount of time you need to stick into it. It's not just beating the game. You can kind of fly through it in maybe 50 hours if you really want to, but I get so distracted. It's one of my favorite games of all time. And there's still so much to do in it. And I'm like, probably 30 hours in. I could probably get the platinum in another 30 hours. But it's a dead request. All right, the dead requests, there's just so many of them. I think I've done three and you have to do 15. And it's not a case of just doing them. You have to find them. And there's a lot of running around. There's so much running, speaking to one bloke, and then traveling to eight doors, beating loads of enemies, to pick something up and then go speak to someone else again. It is very much just a fetch fetch game. I realize that now, but I still love Skyrim more than anything. Well, probably, other than Dex, obviously. It's still a fantastic game, don't get me wrong. But I just feel like I've kind of hit a wall with it where I just don't want to jump into it just yet. But I might return, I, I want to return, but 
I've started a lot of big games and I feel like this is one that has kind of kind of fallen away a little bit. Maybe I will return to it, I'm not sure because there's so many games I have actually left at this point. And I don't really know why. So next is Battlefield, I've spoken about this again. This is a game where we made a boosting group and everyone kind of just just ran away with it because I was busy doing YouTube and they were all just like sweating like eight hours a day on this game and I was like, I cannot keep up. There's about four of us who still haven't got the Platinum. There was this one mode which basically involves you, you have to do it in a team of four. You descend down, kind of like Fortnite style, the, the map. You have to find these data things and you have to extract, okay? And there's eight teams and only two teams can extract. You have to win the game against 28 other players and I actually luckily managed to get the trophy for extracting with the whole team on my first game, but I think we end up playing, I was playing this game Every hour, I would say we weren't even getting an extraction. I think I've got about four extractions and you need like 25 or 50. And looking at it, it looks like it's probably a 10 hour grind of just of actually being good at the game. Which, first person shooter games, maybe not my forte, I have to say. I'm okay at them, I'm absolutely average at them. But it's, it is a struggle. And the other trophies are all pretty easy to do. Just It's just probably not 30 hours of boosting. But that one trophy really soured the game for me. And I just kind of like, ah, fuck you, Battlefield. So is it going to happen? I don't know. All right, so the first Platinum Trophy I've actually earned over the last three months is Green Lantern Rise of the Manhunters. I've been really back in the PS3 genre. And you will notice that through the videos I've been uploading and also these games, because I think three of the games I've actually beat are all PS3 games. Green Lantern was a really fucking good game, okay? It's a movie time game of obviously the Green Lantern movie with Ryan Reynolds. Not a great film. CGI was, was, was pretty bad. But the game itself is really fun. And I think there's a trend here of these PS3 titles coming in. And a lot of them are actually pretty good. And I would give Green Lantern a solid 8 out of 10. Platinum is really easy. You can beat it in probably 15, 18 hours. You have to do it on the hardest difficulty, which is like Emerald Knight, and then just do grinding at the end. And it's not easy on the hardest difficulty without any upgrades. It is probably four out of 10. It's not, it's not hard, but you will die a couple of times. You'll die 10, 15 times, but it's a good game. Honestly, I really had a lot of fun with it. And a lot of people are gonna ask about these PS3 games is, are they on the PS Premium? Are they on, you know, any form of digital? No, the games I've played, I've played them all on the PlayStation 3, as in my old PlayStation 3. I've got the games physically, which I bought somewhat pretty expensive, coming up at like £25, £30, which is obviously not really expensive, but for a PlayStation 3 game, which was only came out and valued at £40 when it came out back in the day, $50, it's, it, is, it was expensive and it has retained its value quite a lot. But you can't play these games. A lot of the games that are movie tie-ins, obviously they were released with licenses to be released for a certain amount of period of time. And then when the license expires, they can no longer be sold digitally, which is why games like this game, Marvel Ultimate Alliance, Dead Deadpool, you can't buy these games digitally anymore because the license has expired on them. So don't ask me in the comments about when you can play on PS Premium because you can't. <laughs> you have to buy the game physically. Okay, so Final Fantasy VII, I don't know why it's even on there. I literally started that game just to tease someone on stream because he kept pestering me to play. I am going to play this game at some point though, very soon, but that's just ignore that. Next is Elden Ring, which is probably the best game I played on PS5. It is one of the best games I've ever played i'm not even kidding you it's in my top three games of all time now i think it actually knocked out witcher 3 for one of the best games i've ever played skyrim last of us and elden ring it is just utterly fantastic and people were telling me to play it for a long time someone would only really play i don't i'd only played bloodborne so i don't i was i'm quite a soulsborne novice not gonna lie there and i was just blown away by the complexity of the combat Honestly, to be fair, you pick it up and you think, oh, the, the combat's quite repetitive. It's very samey. Well, it's not because of the variety in weapons and the way you can tackle it. You know, you've got like, you have all these different range weapons. You have items that can change the way you play. You've obviously got magic. I played most of my game as a magic build, as a mage, but I also change between incantations and magic. So there's two types of magic in the game. And I just had so much fun. I played the, pretty much 80% of the game with Guy Frisky. If you want to watch this video, I highly recommend it. It is one of the best videos I've ever made. It's quite a long one, but that's because... Elden Ring's a 120 hour game. I, I had so much footage for this game. I could have easily made it two hours long. Now the Platinum Trophy is pretty straightforward, but you do need a guide for it. There's not that many collectibles. You just have to get all the weapons and all like the amulets and things like that. Beat the main, main game. You do have to save scum if you want to beat the game in one playthrough. People are going to be like, oh, don't save scum because you know, that's not the legit way to do it. Who gives a fuck, right? Who has time to play Elden Ring all the way through three times when it's like, yeah, it's going to take you 100 hours to beat the game the first time, maybe 25 hours to 30 hours this, the next two times. But if you love the game, you go do that. But as someone who has a backlog of over 100 games and runs a YouTube channel and has a full-time job, I ain't about replaying games just for the sake of it. And it's just utterly fantastic. I can't really recommend it enough. It is one of the best games I've played. 10 out of 10. Platinum Trophy is not too hard. I think it's considerably easier than Bloodborne, only purely because of the open world. Because you get beat, you get stuck on a boss. Unlike Bloodborne, you're stuck. You're stuck on that boss. In Elden Ring, you can kind of move on. Yes, the big bosses, you can get stuck on them and you kind of, to progress, you have to beat them. But the map is just absolutely monstrous. 
and because of that you can just go oh, okay i can't beat this bloke i'm going to just go fight some other bosses level my character up find some new weapons and then come back to him and because of that it's just it's just so fun the replay value is definitely there i haven't played dark souls or Sekiro or anything like that but i just think Elden Ring is such a good beginner game for from software it's definitely beatable by most players it just takes a bit of perseverance it can be beaten and i think people are really intimidated by from software games i think Elden Ring is a great way to dip your toe in and of course there's always people who can jump in and help you out have playing in co-op is considerably more fun the bosses are considerably harder they hit harder and they have more health especially in three player three player is, is brutal but it's so so fun and the playing this game in co-op is, is the way to play it i have to say but it's worth playing by yourself. It is just such a fantastic game. I can't even put into words how good it is. It is one of the best games ever made. I'm just apparently an Elden Ring simp and I don't give a fuck. Next is Wolverine. And for the record, I just want to say every single game I'm talking about in this video, I have made a video on. So if you're interested in any of these, you can watch a more in-depth breakdown of each game. The video is span between 15 to 45 minutes of me get actually getting the Platinum stage by stage. So if you're interested in that, Go check out the channel and just watch some more detail. Next was Wolverine. X-Men Origins Wolverine is famous for a few things. The film is obviously utterly garbage and it's part of the non-canon X-Men films, which most of them are because they've all been removed from the canon because you would if you could, right? And I'm glad they did. But the game is like completely different, right? The game is just like so bloody, so vicious and so goddamn good. It is such a fantastic game. And it's voiced by Hugh Jackman. And it was the same with Green Lantern. Ryan Reynolds reprised his role for that as well. You can never have too much Hugh Jackman or too much Ryan Reynolds in your life. That's something I, I live by. Again, the Platinum Trophy is longer than Green Lantern. It follows a very similar style. It's a third-person hack and slash game. I think Green Lantern had really good variety in its gameplay, whereas Wolverine didn't. And the enemies in X-Men Origins towards the end are pretty shit, especially when you're fighting these big rock dudes. Like, it, it does suck. But the game, it is really, really fun. I had so much fun with it. It does take two playthroughs, you have to unlock hard, so unlike Green Lantern where you can play on hard from the get-go, you have to play Wolverine all the way through on normal and then do it on hard, and you don't get to carry any of your stats through either, so you kind of have to do all your collectible run on the normal, then you kind of have to pay attention to the collectibles on your second run as well, because the collectibles give you such big upgrades and such big boosts to gameplay. That's a little bit annoying, but it doesn't take away from the game. What did take away from the game was the post-game grind. Now, I shit you not, I had to replay the same 8-9 to nine minute section for about seven hours, which was, wasn't great. It wasn't great. That's a curse of trophy hunting, right? You play a game and you have a fantastic time with it. And then the trophy list at the end, you always have a little bit of a grind where it kind of sours it just a smidgen, smidgen bit. And yeah, it did sour slightly, but I'm not gonna let that ruin my opinion of it for you guys. It's a solid game. Again, you can't play it. You only play it on PS3. If you haven't got a PS3 console, you ain't gonna be able to play it, unfortunately. But it's a fucking banger. All right, movie tying games. I then played Iron Man 2. All right, so I'm going through a phase where I want to try and platinum as many superhero games as I can. I've got a massive list of them. X-Men Destiny, Captain America, some Lego games, Midnight Suns, and I have, Iron Man 2 sucked. <laughs> Iron Man 2 sucked, right? There's no other way of saying it. The flight mechanics were okay. That's all I'm really going to say. It's considerably shorter than X-Men Origins and Green Lantern. Green Lantern was probably an 18-hour platinum. X-Men Origins was probably like a 28 to 30 Iron Man is about a 10 hour, 11 hour. The base game can actually be beaten. I beat it in one stream in three and a half hours. On hard, it is pretty unforgiving. I'd probably go as far as to say that it's actually the hardest of the PS3 superhero movie time games I've played. Probably still just a four or 10, maybe. I can't give it a five, but on hard, everything is a one shot. All the bosses you face just one shot you. And as well, your health. So your health, you have a little health shield that regenerates but your actual health doesn't regenerate throughout the entire level. So if you take one bad hit from one enemy, you're on half health for the rest of the level. The levels are probably, you know, they're only eight to 15 minutes long, but when the levels have bosses at the end, if you make a few silly mistakes up to the boss, you're going to be going into the boss with a quarter health. And unless you restart the entire level, you've got to try and make that work. And I think that's what makes it so difficult because every boss I faced, I think, I didn't have full health, which meant that I was getting one shot at and one shot at and one shot at absolutely endlessly. And it led to some frustrating streams and some frustrating moments. And I streamed this game twice and I was going to stream it again and I was playing it and I was like, this game is so shit that I'm not going to have a good time on the stream. I was getting so frustrated. And it was during that time where, the, where we had like a heat wave in, in England and we've got some more coming up, which I obviously can't wait for. And I was sitting there on stream just streaming with sweat. It was just coming. It was just going down my face. It was into my eyes. I could see it on my hair. My hair was like just wet. It was a great stream. It was a great stream. Yeah, yeah, fun times. Thankfully, I only played like eight pound for Iron Man 2, so I wasn't too defeated by it. And I still got a platinum, and I'm close to the 500 plat, so I ain't going to complain. I just probably couldn't recommend this one, whereas X-Men Origins and Green Lantern get the plat, but we'll see the approval. Okay, so the last platinum I've earned over the last three months is Swordsman VR. 
Now, you know what? I just had an inclination to go for a VR game, all right? I spent literally like two and a half hours setting it up. Like, it's an absolute fucking ball ache. And it's difficult to set up a PlayStation VR for a normal person, right? And by that, I mean somebody who doesn't make YouTube videos because I have a capture card plugged in. And not only that, I actually have a HDMI splitter so I can use my PlayStation 3 footage whenever I want because it's really hard to capture PlayStation 3 footage. So not only did I have to set the PSVR, I had to put it through a capture card and through a HDMI splitter, which meant I needed like four... <laughs> Four HDMI cables or five HDMI cables and literally it's like just box, 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 PlayStation and the VR is just hanging out here. Like it was difficult to set up and now I'm at the point where I still have to redo it all if I want to play a PS3 game. So I'm kind of on the back foot about going back to PS3 because of how difficult it was to set up the PSVR. Swordsman VR is hilarious. It is such a good game and I made a video on this. I captured myself playing it for part of it. I just, I watched the footage back and I was like, this footage is Moorish. Watching me just stab people in the head, watching me just smash people's faces in with maces, shoot them in the neck with a bow and arrow, like, it was all just a hoot. It was just hilarious, and it's such a fun game to experience. The Platinum was about 11 hours, and again, quite a tiring one. Being stood up in an incredibly hot room like this, again, you're just, like, sweating. And I felt like I was getting some cardio in, all right? And as someone who doesn't do cardio, because I, I can't be asked. It was tough, but also utterly fantastic. It's a great game, really good game. If you've got a VR, it's actually on VR 2 as well. So if you've got a VR, it is really worth playing. All right, so that, they're the five Platinums I've earned. All quite short. I mean, Elden Ring was about 120 hours, but the other ones were all, you know, under 15 hours, which is kind of a good balance for me right now. Like I said, my ADHD is just, it's just breaking my ability to concentrate on anything longer than an hour. So because of that, I'm enjoying these short games, which I can jump into, have a good time with, and then move on to the next game. And this brings me on to the games I'm working on. So I, did, I started Fallout 4, all right? Because I wanted to challenge myself to do a game differently. So I wanted to platinum it without any, uh, without any fists. With, with only fists, you know? It was, it was only fists for, for Fallout, all right? And I'm enjoying it. I enjoyed it a lot. And I'm about 25 hours in the game. The platinum's about 60 hours and the DLC's another 40 or 50. I am going to go on to that. I am going to do this at some point. But it's kind of like Skyrim. Like Skyrim's priorities have just dropped. And then Fallout's like, yeah, but it, I can feel it descending into the, the list of not priority, the list of unimportance as I speak about it in this video. So we'll see about that one. <laughs> and then next, Cuphead. So Cuphead is a game I started when Adam and Lucy and Guy Frisky came to visit me. I have like three hours of footage of us all playing it together and it was a lot of fun and I decided it's time to go back into it and I've been streaming it. It's fucking hard, all right? And it's people in the stream being like, Cuphead's a four out of 10. It's not a four out of 10, this game is fucking hard. Like, it is a hard game. It's, it is harder than Crash Bandicoot, without a doubt. It is just very ruthless. And I find that the running gun level, so Cuphead's broken them into two parts. 80% of the game is just boss runs. 20% is these running gun levels, like old school platforming games. And they are really, really difficult. The bosses themselves, it's just memory of repetition and memory of patterns, right? The running gun is the same, but it just feels like there's so much on the screen at all times. It's not just things coming toward you it's like coming from behind they come from above they come from below and you're just stood there with your little pea shooter like i hope i don't get hit again because i've only got two hp left and that's after like two minutes of playing the game so am i enjoying it I, I don't know if i'm enjoying this one this is a game i've been playing and i've been frustrated for example i was on a call last night for an hour and a half and i played the same running gun level for that entire hour and a half and i couldn't fucking beat it so apparently i mean i've always said i'm shit platformers i've always said platforming is not my strength i did i played it a little bit as a kid but then, you know, from the age of like 10, I just dropped off and it's always been hack and slash third person or first person fighting games. They're the games that I exceed at, not side by side fighting games. Come on, you know, action RPG kind of games are where I have thrived. And that's why I spent most of my time, most of my youth and my young 20s. My skill level is... <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not crying about Cuphead, okay? I'm just, I'm just coughing. I'm just here for you, okay? This is not Cuphead, Cuphead tea as I promise. Ugh. Oh, right. Anyways, I feel like my, <laughs> my, I've just like lost, uh, I've lost my, I've lost my flow here. I feel like my skill of platformers is just like lower than what it should be for someone who's been gaming for like 20 years, right? Because I just had that big break in them. And even when I went back to Crash, it took me like 15 hours to be able to beat like 10 levels. And then when I actually got like my skill to that level, I was able to beat the majority of the game. And I feel like Cuphead is going to be the same. We'll see about Cuphead. I am going to do the DLC if... I could beat the main game and I'm going to make a video like, you know, as I've been doing, I've been making videos on pretty much every game I've been planning at this point. So a video for Cuphead hopefully will come out at some point if I can goddamn beat it, but we'll see. Okay, so the final game is Gotham Knights. I bought this game 
around Christmas time, it was on sale for like £21, and I was like, that's, that's a good price, because there's been a very mixed reception on this game. Totally get the mixed reception. It was not made by Rocksteady, but it's obviously following the Arkham theme, so people were expecting it to be like Arkham City, which it just is not. It's capped at 30 frames, which, which isn't great. The combat leaves room to be desired, but I'm actually having a lot of fun with it. I'm mad into a DC sort of phase at the moment. I've watched 25 DC films over the last four weeks, and I'm loving it, and I'm loving Batman. And Nightwing is kind of low-key one of my favorite DC characters now, I have to say. It's okay. Like, I can totally get why if you're not a superhero fan, you're not going to see the charm here. You know, you've got to have something in it to actually appreciate this, because there is a lot of lore, and just seeing the four, you know, Bat family together, interacting together, and being able to choose and play with each one whenever you want, it's probably like a three or four or ten, it is about 30 hours, two playthroughs, and I'm going to go for the DLC, because there's four-player DLC, so everyone was complaining that's only two-player. It's a four-player horde mode, alright? So, you know, don't worry. So that brings me to the end of the list of games I've been playing. I've started like 10 games over the last three months. I've only managed to finish five of them. And I've bought another five or six games as well that I haven't even mentioned. Total Manager, Young Justice. I bought like four PS3 games, all superhero related. And I am going to work on them eventually. But I am going to just see. See how it goes. And that's it for this one, guys. Don't forget to let me know down below what games you've been working on, what platinums you've earned over the last two or three months, how hard they've been. Would you recommend them? All that good stuff. It helps me I get an idea of what you've been playing, but also, you know, people in the comments might want to get an idea of games to play. So if you can sell a game in the comments, you might get someone to play it, which is always good. And if you like this video, if we can get to 500 likes, I will do another update in the last two or three months. Thanks for watching. Peace.